Hey there everybody, Brian here. In this video, I wanna show you this. This is the updated version of Hyundai i10. So this video is not gonna be speci specification even uh, specific, but um, I just wanna show you the differences between this facelift version of i10 in relation to the model that's gone before it. If there's any information you want on any of these cars, Brian is my name, 086-843-1945. Call, text, or WhatsApp, or whatever is useful, and I'd be happy to answer any of the questions that I can. Or if you're watching on YouTube and you think I've missed something, just let me know in the comments section below. In Ireland, there will be three different specifications on the car, and they will range around basically an entry model called the Classic, a second model called Deluxe, like what we have in the video here, and a third model called N-Line. I will have a video Whenever we get three of those cars side by side, I'll have a video that runs through all three different specifications. For today, I'm comparing the middle spec deluxe in the facelift versus the outgoing middle spec deluxe. Looking around the cars on the front, so the first thing that we see then is the daytime running lights are very, very striking. So I always like these little daytime running lights. They're basically um, the parking lights and also the daytime running lights during the day. Down low then there's front fog lights and then obviously the full and dipped headlights up through here. So what's changed here is these are much larger and much more striking. They look like they're flickering on this video. It's just whatever way my phone records it. Um, they are really going to catch your eye. So they're really, really aggressive looking. They're very, very cool looking. And the other thing that's changed then, if you look at the composition of the grille, while there was a piano black type of finish on the top here on the outgoing model, and then a more of a matte plastic finish on the bottom. Similarly, again, it's the same over here, but this got a longer slat. So you see the way it's longer slats rather than individual kind of little square sections over here. And then this one had a different kind of contour finish along here. Whereas this one, different shapes along here which are more similarly shaped to how the daytime running lights are but on the front of the car the most striking thing when that car drives up behind you or if you see it driving towards you is definitely those daytime running lights are very very cool and the other thing that you see in a lot of Hyundai's now it's the new badge that they have so it's much more flatter and modern looking compared to the chrome one that had I suppose it was more of a protruding kind of 3d image in chrome this one is more of a brushed aluminium style effect but much flatter moving on the side sorry it's really noisy here in the background um so the side profile of the car okay so looking down the sides it is very very much identical to the previous model that went through but there is one significant change that you can see along here which is the wheels while they look like a similar style the more you look at them they are a little bit different and what's really nice on these ones and people really like it these days is a diamond cut finish a diamond cut finish giving it that kind of shiny and reflective finish under artificial light or even the sun so you can see along here it's kind of shiny and very very nice looking when the wheels are turning like we're saying to you on a sunny day or even just at night time under artificial light from the point of view of the side profile of the cars it retains all the similar stuff that we've seen before, like privacy glass, like even small details down along here, like the way it says I-10 on the C-pillar along here. They haven't made any changes, and a lot of the time what manufacturers do, they might put some extra chrome or stuff like that. I actually think on this car, it works better without the chrome, so you have basically a contrast of white body, okay, but it could be any body colour, white body in this case, black along here, and you see the way then this tinted window runs into the C-pillar, which joins the rear window along here, and even along here then there's a nice piano black finish which runs along the back of the spoiler it's quite nice dark shiny reflective material on the rear all the nice shapings on the car are retained from the previous model so uh, there's a nice little black splitter diffuser down along here and then after that the major change is again it's moved from the more protruding 3d badge into the flatter more modern badge on the rear For anyone that's really really sharp when they're looking to see this car has the camera here whereas this one doesn't while the previous model then they might see has rear sensors this one has the camera instead. But anyway, we'll see that when we get into the car. For anyone that's not familiar with i10, then this is the size of the boot. And after that, there is also a spare wheel. And the seats, they can go down completely flat. If you have anything awkward that you want to put into the car. Again, like its predecessor then, it has a nice stitching section along through here. It's got a dark, hard-wearing black cover on the seats. And even the plastics along the doors and stuff like that, they have some nice contoured features. Obviously, child lock back here, electric for rear window, and then a dark door handle in here. Up front, then, the materials on the seats, again, similar to what we saw on the back, with some extra kind of stitching and piping down around the peripheral, peripheral even, edges of seats, just to make it a little bit more sporty looking on the inside. So between the outgoing model and the current model, there's no major differences on the plastics and on the seating material used. However, most of the differences revolve around this area here, 
where you're going to be sitting in the car. So as you see, this is the previous model. It had parking sensors, so it didn't have the camera. It didn't have the screen to allow you to use things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And also then the dash clocks that were on that car were normal analog dash clocks. So they had physical dials for giving readouts on speed and engine temperatures and things like that. Down here then, there was a USB, there was some storage, but it didn't have things like uh, wireless charging or anything like that. So that's the type of stuff that we're gonna see when we move into the revised version. So sitting then in the revised version, now this screen was on what they called the Deluxe Plus model before, but this one now is the Deluxe, so it now comes a standard. So that's a big reverse camera. After that then, you have the ability then to use things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. So that's gonna be useful then for things like Google Maps, Spotify, Audible, all those kind of apps, they become sort of car friendly. The heating controls, I don't ever think there was a need to change them. I love the traditional style heating controls. Warm, cold, how fast do I want this, the fan, where do I want it to blow, rear demister and air conditioning. Simple, straightforward, non-distracting. The difference on this revised version is I got two USB points and after that then I also have a wireless charging pad where there was just storage on the previous model. Over here then, they are controls for the dash and for that kind of information, cruise control with a speed limiter over through here. Controls for Bluetooth and audio in through here. Usual stuff you'd expect on the door then, front and rear electric windows, electrics for mirrors as well, controls for lights and also traction control. And the lights are then automatic, so they come on at night time themselves, but they're also auto dip. So when I push this, that means when they meet traffic, they'll actually dip themselves. And when they go to an unlit area, they'll actually go to the full lights by themselves also. One of my favorite things on the new model then is this actual digital clock. So we saw already that the previous model had analog clocks, whereas this one's all digital. So look at the way the revolution counter kind of indicator is. That's really, really cool. Numbers and uh, a kind of almost, how did I'm not sure what, how you describe that, but it's almost building up to your high end revolutions. Very, very cool looking. Um, you can also change themes like, so, you know, if you want different colors, how it looks, uh, that's all very nice. And this one, we can't see it during the day, but it's also got ambient lighting. So you can have ambient lighting um, you know, how bright or dark you want it. And that basically means in around the door pockets, in around here, you're going to have some extra lighting, which is really nice at nighttime. So the i10's always been a safe car. So what I mean by that is obviously anti-lock brakes, emergency brake assist, you'd have a driver's airbag, you'd have basically a curtain one up high, you'd have the side of your seats, you'd have steel bars for side impact protection. But there's some extra safety features on this car now as well. So things like forward collision avoidance. So basically if I drive towards a car, I don't touch the brake pedal. You can see how the car has stopped me. It gives the same warning on the screen. And yeah, it's pretty violent the way it does it. But what happens is it actually, uh, if it's detected you haven't touched the brake pedal. So it's trying to stop you, it's trying to apply the brakes basically because you haven't done so in time. Like all modern cars then, there's also going to be a function for um, lane keep assist. So there's going to be a function basically that's going to stop you drifting out of your lane, which is quite useful. And there's also going to be a lane keep. So we've got two functions down here, okay? So you see these two ones down here? One of them basically is um, the bottom left one, which is going to turn off. That is trying to keep you dead center. Sorry, that's trying to keep you from leaving your lane, okay? That's fine. But the second little steering wheel that comes on, that's trying to keep you dead center in the lane. So it's a highway drive assist. So basically you've got two things that are trying to stop you from leaving your lane if you get distracted. And with so many distractions in the road and so many other distracted drivers these days, I think these are all kind of turning into things that are almost as important as how the safety belt was years ago when it came out. Anyway, let's go for a drive. When you're driving the car on the road, again, like safety-wise, I know I keep going on about it, but for a car of this size to have that much safety, like there's a driver attention warning, which warns you if you're drifting around the road and you know, you're not basically, your inputs aren't that of a coherent person that's going to warn you. Even things like when you close the car, it warns, or sorry, when you turn off the car, it warns you to make sure to check your back seats, just to make sure you haven't left something inside the car, unfortunately, like a child. This car has also got the speed limit assist as well, with traffic sign recognition. As annoying as it can be to have something beeping, it does warn you that you are exceeding the speed limit, and exceeding the speed limit is not a good thing, even if just from the point of view of safety, but even just keeping your driver's license clean. Um, so that's going to warn you if you drift over the speed limit, and it also tells you the other speed, sorry, the other signposts that might be on the road, things like non-overtaking, or uh, roadworks ahead, or a sharp bend ahead, or whatever, you can recognize all those, and it displays them on the dash. When you're driving the car on the road, these are quite a nimble car. I love driving cars this size. They're, 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 fle like they're flexible, nimble, responsive. You feel like you're involved in what's going on. It's easy to do a three-point turn. Nice big camera that we saw already. They're just, for me, they're enjoyable to drive. It's not super fast or anything, but it's really, really nippy. The gearbox feels nice. The steering feels nice. 
They drive really nice, but I have to say I love cars in this segment. I just find them really satisfying to drive. So anyway, hopefully that video has given you a better idea of what this new model of i10 is all about. If you want information on the car, 086-843-1945. This is Patrick's Garage, a family-run business in operation for almost 70 years. Hopefully the video is useful. Thanks for watching.